Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here, and today I want to show you a quick just image of some things that can maybe help you see what's going on more with the law versus the spirit and the ministry of condemnation versus the ministry of acceptance. And so I just want to share these images with you if it would be helpful. Okay, first we have the shadow and the sun. I'm going to call this the shadow and the sun because the ministry of condemnation comes from the law of Moses. And the scripture says that's a shadow of the things to come. And then over here we have the ministry of acceptance, which is where the son of righteousness is. And this is Jesus Christ. And this is the ministry of grace. So we're contrasting these two things. But I wanted to show you that when you think about a shadow, what naturally comes to mind? Well, the reason they say that the law is a shadow is because the son of righteousness arose with healing in his wings from the grave. He arose. And this is Jesus Christ right here. The son of righteousness is Jesus Christ. But he is the son and he rose from the grave. And what does the son do on an object at noonday? The sun shines, doesn't it? It shines out a long way. And when it does that, what happens to objects in the way? Here's the law of Moses. The sun of righteousness has risen and it is shining on the law of Moses. What is going to be cast in this shining and this brilliance here? There's going to be a shadow that is cast. And this darkness is the shadow that is cast from the sun of righteousness shining onto the law of Moses. It casts a shadow. And that's why the scripture says that the law is a shadow of the good things to come, not just after the sun has risen, but even before the sun rose. Because the weather forecast said it's going to be sunny and the law was going to be outshined by the sun of righteousness. Okay, there's another illustration I want to show you. If I can um, do this. So let's do the cross here in the front. So here we have cross right here. And then we have in front of the cross, what is there? There is a shadow in front of the cross. Why? Why is there a shadow in front of the cross? Because the cross, in the front of the cross, when you see that, why is it so offensive to society? You know why? Because it says you need a savior. And what do people say in their flesh? I don't need a savior. I've never killed anybody. What do you mean? Don't judge me. You know, all that. That's what this means. This is condemnation and judgment coming from God because this is his grace offered to humanity. And if you reject it, you're going to reap what you sow. So let's look at, this is the front side of the cross, and in that front side, there is the law of Moses, right? In that shadow, in the front of the cross, when you approach the cross, there is the judgment if you don't come, see? And so, but what is behind the cross? This is where the Lord took me in my book, My Journey Through the Cross. He took me to the cross, through the cross, and beyond the cross. You know what's behind the cross? It's the Son of Righteousness. He's behind the cross. The glory is behind the cross. So behind the cross, you're going to get all this glory shining out behind it, see? So when you approach the cross, you have the law 
telling you that you need a savior. It's pointing you to the cross, right? And so once you um, crucify yourself and you become one with Christ in his crucifixion, you crucify yourself to your own life, your own everything, you, be, you accept the fact that you're one spirit with him, you can pass through that cross and you can abide back here in the righteousness of Christ that is already yours by faith, even at the front of the cross. But you can hang out here and experience this glory of the risen Christ living in and through you every day. But you have to go through the cross. There is no shortcut. There's no shortcut. So there is glory here. There is freedom here. And this is the letter of the Spirit back here. This is the letter of the law in the front. So I believe that the Lord is calling the body of Christ not to come just to the cross, but to be crucified with him and go through the cross because he wants us hanging out back here with him in the glory, in the freedom, in the promised land. Okay, so I hope these images are helpful. This is a review of the shadow and the sun spoken of in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions or comments or ideas, put them in the comment section and I'll be glad to respond. All right, y'all have a great day and I'll see you soon.